So earlier today I was asking myself, what would define a car as being a chick magnet? And I asked the Discord that, I got a couple of odd answers, some AMG cars in there, and then finally we got to the real meat of things. It's the 80s style vans with graphics on the side. That is what you want to get if you want to get in with the ladies. Honestly though, if you want actual relationship advice, having a car means nothing. Uh, literally nothing. Doesn't matter what you drive, it's all about your personality and who you are and how you treat people. That's really what's gonna determine if you're a chick magnet or not. I don't even like the term chick magnet, but I think it really flows well with this. Uh, maybe you're just really into chickens, probably a little bit too much. Needless to say, I've picked out this 1980s van body here. This looks like a Chrysler. Uh, I forgot what they used to be called back in these days. I think the Voyager or something. Uh, so we're going 1982, <laughs> 2.8 meter. It's, it's a minivan, but it'll work. And it's also a panel van for uh, obvious reasons. Now I am going to try and go slightly realistic. However, I don't know what kind of engines these vans had, so I'm going to make up my own. Uh, that being said, it's going to be steel. And uh, let's make it a ladder frame van. It's going to be body on frame. Now these things were not particularly expensive back in the day unless you got like a motorhome version. For some reason those are just wickedly expensive these days. Even old ones with lots of kilometers, just nuts. Now this is a big one because I'm honestly not sure. I think I'm going to go longitudinal and we're going to go rear wheel drive. Uh, and I'm probably gonna put, mm, it's kind of a truck, but it's also not a truck. So let's go Leafs on the back, because uh, you gotta carry some weight. You gotta carry all the babes in the back of this thing. The most important part of this thing is the graphics. So that's gonna be where I have a lot of fun and a lot of heartbreak, because it's gonna be very difficult to put them on there. But uh, back in the 80s, I'm gonna assume that this thing just had a small V8. Uh, so we'll go for a 90 degree uh, cast V8. Um, with push rods and again cast. I don't know what kind of size though. Four liters actually doesn't sound too bad. I'm gonna up the stroke because I think that uh, it's probably gonna need more torque than it is gonna need RPM. Uh, in terms of sizing, like we have a lot of room left here, so no big deal at all. We could probably cram a big lad in this. Oh wow, really big. Um, <laughs> 10 liters, 11 liters actually if we wanted to. Maybe a little bit out there. Instead, I'm going to make it a 5 liter V8. Again, I have no idea what Chrysler had in cars back in these days. This is the 80s, so a lot can happen. <laughs> oh well, that'll be good. In terms of power, I don't expect it to even make 200. Uh, that's really uh, that's really good enough for me. So we're going to detune it specifically to try and make it slightly more realistic. This is not going to be fast in the slightest. No turbos or anything fancy like that. Uh, carburetor or injection? Um, you know what? EFI might be an interesting one. <laughs> let's go, I hardly ever go single point EFI, so let's do that with a standard intake. This is a very obscure engine. I do not often see this. It would probably make more sense if it was carbureted, but it's fine. And we'll go leaded fuel just because I want to rep the, uh, <laughs> rep the clan. Lead fuel clan never dies until they all choke and die from cancer. Uh, okay, so onto this probably short cast. We don't need anything crazy I, I just want to make it ever so slightly better and it is going to be single exhaust another thing that I hardly ever do <laughs> Okay, uh, let's go reverse flow and just a normal muffler on the back and wow We have some minor issues. Okay, so we've got problems because the car can't take this high of rpm uh, The rpm limit is way too high for these pistons and conrods to work and the knocking is quite significant, uh, probably too high in the compression. Uh, we need 99 octane and we're not getting that. Let's go up here. There we go, 230 horsepower, that's looking a lot better. The, uh, it was suffering from valve float, oh geez. Uh, okay, let me try and fix all this. Okay, that's better. Um, basically, I just need to, I'm going to turn down the cam profile so our power peak is a little bit lower because these can, things can't take the current power peak. Uh, the way that it's set up and I'm just gonna turn some of this stuff down here way down okay I think I've come to a point where I'm happy with it uh, I don't know why I'm in the turbo tab but I've got 220.8 horsepower so 221 horsepower and 385 Newton meters of torque very low rpm this thing is uh, not exactly a rever but I think it's gonna work just fine 1980s 220 horsepower that's pretty decent so this is actually going to be a pretty powerful engine. Shockingly enough, it's going to propel this thing quite fast. Uh, at least I think so. It's, it's likely to be quite heavy. Let me quickly paint this thing up and give it some classic style and we'll move on. Keeping in mind, of course, that these vans were bedazzled to heck, so let's go. 
Oh yeah, the cool part about this is I can actually paint the block now. <laughs> so a cool red block, I don't see why not. Oh yeah, that's looking uh, very, very red, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, it's kind of cool. I hardly ever paint the engine box, so I'm kind of down with that. Let's move on to the next step. Specifically styling, because uh, yeah, it's going to be a panel van and uh, it's going to need some style. Lots and lots of style. We've kind of got to mimic the quality of these vans from back in the day. Uh, we'll see what I can do about that. It's kind of a truck base. It's also really tall. Okay, so our base color is very important. Um, it's probably... Oh, that's cool. Oh, we can go two-tone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on a minute. We definitely need two-tone. Okay, so I've kind of gone with a yellow and black theme here. No, I'm not going to color it as a B. I actually haven't decided what I'm going to color it. <laughs> I'm probably going to end up changing that, but I do kind of like the way it looks, so... That's what I'm going with for now. Now we obviously have to pick out some style and wheels as well. And then I want to quickly adjust the ride height so that that's kind of where it should be. And then we'll start working on the aesthetics, which is going to be where things are uh, most interesting. <laughs> that's where most of the work is going to be done. But oh, okay. I think I might have the wheels. Okay, so I just went through and did the entire drivetrain just super quick. We'll go back through it again later on, but uh, yeah, this is how it's looking. I also decided to pop out the fenders a little bit, just to, just a touch to give it a bit of an off-road ruggedness because uh, the way I have this thing set up is um, kind of like a body on frame off-road truck spec van, which is not great <laughs> for the purposes of what I'm trying to do, but it's not terrible either because I've also extended the back end sort of like the old Ford Econoline vans where instead of moving the axle back, they just extended the back end and they were dangerous as heck. But yeah, um, that's some old van trivia for you. Let's uh, let's move on with the styling. Styling is always what scares me the most because it can totally make or break a car <laughs> uh, in terms of it actually being decent. Now, I'm probably going to look up a reference real quick to make sure I'm not going too far off the deep end because I do want it to look mildly realistic and in order for the reference to work, it's going to have to be a, a similar vehicle. Okay, so I realize this van kind of looks like a caravan a little bit. Uh, that's what I should have called it way back in the beginning, because it is supposed to be a caravan, I think. However, I'm gonna model after the, like, slightly upsized versions, um, which apparently is called, like, B200 or something? I, I have no idea what these vans are called. Ram van, maybe? Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go based on one of those. So in order to make this work, we're gonna need the kind of, like, wraparound grill with lights, uh, which is, shouldn't be too hard. I just have to find the right pattern here and we'll be off to the races. So in order for these lights to work, they have to be absolutely massive, which is uh, <laughs> not, not quite ideal. It is hilarious though, look at this thing. I absolutely hate it, but I also totally love it. Uh, I think I might be settled here. I just got to change up the colors and uh, yeah, oh boy, this thing is going to get sent off. Okay, you'll be happy to know that I shrunk them ever so slightly in comparison to how they were before, uh, but not not by much. <laughs> there you go. That's the front end of Kings right there. Beautiful. Okay, working my way around, I think it's time that I added just a little bit of extra detail on there. Windshield wipers are a good way to make a car look ever so slightly more realistic, while also keeping it, uh, well, it's just easy to do. <laughs> it's not going to make it too complex looking. Just a little bit of detail. So the game crashed there, because I guess it couldn't hold on to this amount of beauty, but uh, there are some vents that are on the um, top of the hood here on these vans, so I'm just going to put those on there too, just to make it ever so slightly nicer. Just a little bit of realism really goes a long way. Okay, so the game crashed again, which means it's very much not liking what I'm attempting to do here, but I was picking out mirrors for the thing, and the game was like, eh, yeah, you know what, no mirrors for you. However, uh, I'm just going to put some on anyways. We'll just have to put them right on the door here. Just make them far, far too big as all these mirrors need to be. Otherwise, you can't see behind you. And they're on backwards. Oh, wow. Okay, there we go. Chrome mirrors on there. This is turning into a total hack job. I'm very unimpressed with myself. Uh, okay, let me see if I can redeem this thing. Okay, next is door handles. We need some of those on the front. And we're going to need some of them on the doors as well, because I'm just going to assume that these are sliding doors. Okay, that's actually really nice. I'm very happy with that. Uh, we've got sliding doors on both sides. Probably not really realistic, but uh, we'll just go with it. Actually, I could probably just... Yeah, we'll just put sliding doors on the driver's side, although I think it probably would have been on the passenger classically. That's fine, though. 
Okay, that bothered me enough that I fixed it. Uh, I'm gonna put on a fuel cap, because, <laughs> well, otherwise, how are we gonna fill this thing up? Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, we need a total back end rework, tons of graphics, and yeah, that might be it. Well, an interior as well. I wanna do a bit of an interior. I won't go too crazy, but I could do quite a bit with all this space in there. There's a lot of room for activities. Okay, it took me like four hours, but I finally put an exhaust on the thing. <laughs> It's real jank, but I just wanted it to pop out behind the wheel and not have anything seen. So that's what we get. The muffler is way up in the cabin. Don't worry about that. It's uh, highly realistic. <laughs> highly. Okay, so one easy way to tell that this is a Voyager van is that this is a hatchback. Uh, the other vans had uh, double doors here instead of hatchbacks. However, um, because I'm mildly styling this after not a Voyager van, although looking at these headlights, I probably should change it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what have I done? Anyway, I'll think about that. I'll think about it. Uh, onwards to the back end though. Now let's just try and make it a little bit more Voyager-esque because that does seem to be the better design for this body. <laughs> okay, so essentially all I've done in this build so far is create a worse looking caravan. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, but I'm not done yet. Uh, so I made it from Vice City because... I don't know, It's got it's gotta be from Vice City. <laughs> Let me just start adding in the detail and see if it fixes it. It's kind of worse that you can see through the back window because now you can see the like terrible vents sticking through the windshield and stuff. It, just don't think about it too much. Uh, oh, I totally forgot. Wood paneling. Oh, <laughs> okay, hold on. I might have a new trick up my sleeve here. Puke yellow with wood paneling. We have to do it. Oh no, there is wood paneling. Oh jeez. Oh no, I'm forced to come to a conclusion here that my Voyager, my body on frame version of the Voyager, needs a little bit better of a touch, <laughs> including a lot of wood. Way too much wood. Okay, after a bunch of work, we, uh, we have wood paneling all down the side of the van. I just have to do the front. I found an interesting trick though, um, which I'll show you here in a second. Basically, if you take your, your panel that you want to put on there, say I want to put this uh, this piece here on there, and let me just line it up. So I've got this in sort of the way that I want it to go, just kind of down here, but it doesn't want to go any further down. An easy way to fix that is just jump over to 3D, because now it's not clipping with anything anymore. Just uh, work with it like this. And that way you can also get it underneath some of these things, like this piece here. Uh, which I thought was really cool, so I'm going to keep using this technique to, to get around that issue. Okay, now that that panel is kind of uh, kind of around there, just a little bit nicer, then I can keep going forwards and hopefully meet up with the lights here and make it just ever so slightly better. Just, just a little bit would be nice. Just a touch, please. Okay, I'm glad I didn't give up on the wood paneling because that is uh, absolutely horrible and also genius at the same time. <laughs> It's so terrible, but I love it. Okay, so the wood paneling was not just stuck on there by itself. I, I can tell you right now that this took me half an hour to do, but I'm gonna make it even better because it needs a little bit of trim on there as well. Just a little bit of chrome trim. So on the top, that was actually extremely easy, like shockingly easy, probably a bit too easy. <laughs> but now we have uh, slightly, well, it's it has a slight depth to it, uh, chrome trim on there. Uh, which I think is really cool. So I'm going to do the rest on the bottom and the back and uh, the front as well, I guess. Man, we're, I'm just putting chrome everywhere now. This is going to be a chrome mobile. I didn't even intend for this. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. The chrome trim. <laughs> it took so long to do, but it was so worth it. Oh man, okay, hold on a minute. I have to just look at this for a second to remind myself that this is the front end. I can't stand these lights. I can't do it. Okay, that is such a significant improvement. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with that. I had to peel back a bit of the wood to get it to fit, but overall, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's way better. Um, now the yellowish panel van, this thing is like a PT Cruiser now, except the actual original version. Um, it's terrible, but it's also beautiful and uh, I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> so much for being a chick magnet, this is an everyone magnet. Everybody wants one of these. Now obviously I still have a lot of work to do on the interior, uh, and I also want to do some work on the graphics. And I was actually hoping to have some of those like bubble windows at the back, so 
I'm gonna take some time to work on those. I think I'm gonna be able to use headlights though. In fact, I think I'm gonna be able to use modular headlights. <laughs> that was my idea at least. Okay, so we actually have portal windows now, which is uh, brilliant, absolutely beautiful. Okay, yeah, ever so slightly it's getting better. Just ignore all the notches in the wood. It was um, Chrysler factories, you know how it is. <laughs> okay, so I do need to make some kind of decals on the side of this thing. It's not going to be anime girls this time, although if you're wondering, this is all from mods. I didn't specifically get these. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going with. Now this is not an accurate van interior in the slightest, but I'm going to put it in there uh, just because I'm hoping that uh, it'll fill up that space. <laughs> I just, what the heck have I done? I just want to make it look decent. <laughs> that's all. Oh man, okay, that's that's looking good. <laughs> Not right at all, but it's got something. Now we can at least see something through here. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if only they had beds in here. <laughs> I just need a bed in the back and we're set. Oh, we do have comfy chairs though. Ooh, okay. I've got some work to do. So I've done this before in another car that I built, but uh, if I take one of these seats and uh, kind of just extend it out a lot. I can turn it into a bench seat. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna make our own bench seat here. <laughs> oh yeah, she big. But it's uh, it's thematically accurate for this. I think it just makes the most sense. So a full gray, full on bench seat. Who needs seat belts? That's, uh, oh, man, there's no headrest either. You're just gonna lose your head if you get into, into an accident. All right, that's looking pretty darn good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think we need any center console because I mean, this would be like a, it would be a column shift and uh, dashboard stuff. Probably need to work on that too, but hmm. Is that, is that almost done? I've got uh, my other car's a spaceship on the back is definitely as realistic as that is. <laughs> so I was thinking for the design. Um, I'm ha I was having trouble thinking about something for it. Oh man, no. Oh no. I, I need sort of a, hmm. I need a theme if I'm gonna design it in a way. And so far it's kind of like a desert cruiser. That's kind of what it looks like to me. It looks like something that you would take to the desert to go camping. Um, so I don't know, no idea. Okay, I've decided what I'm gonna do. Instead of drawing like a huge design on the back, I'm just gonna do some small pictures on it. Um, which if you've seen my pictures in the past, you'll know they aren't great. So apologies in advance, my artistic talent is incredibly lacking. Okay, I'm doing my best Bob Ross impression here. Uh, I'm just trying to put on some trees. This is gonna be a forestry division truck now, isn't it? It's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you how long it's been, but uh, the Save the Trees van is, uh, is ready to go. Who loves nature more than people who actually have feelings? Uh, and so, therefore, everybody will be flocking to this van because they see trees, they see nature, they see a good message about saving trees. It's just beautiful, okay? This is exactly what you would expect to see uh, from somebody who is actually a nice person. If that says free candy, though, don't go near it, okay? Don't go near that. My goodness, it has been a while, but I think I'm actually done with this van. I've had been having a lot of fun just randomly putting stuff on there, like trees, I don't know. It's a little bit out there, but I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the actual drivetrain part of this. I think the interior is uh, is done. Nice and simple, doesn't need to be too complex, but we're going to be out here saving trees and, and picking up people and taking them to environmentalist uh, things. Do they even have those anymore? Probably not because of the virus, but conferences, that's what I was after. Don't go to any of those. Just try to be good about the environment, my goodness. Weird coming from somebody who's into cars, I know, but anyway. Rear wheel drive, automatic, three speed. That is a little bit controversial uh, because I have no idea how bad this is gonna be. It's a 49.5% wheel spin issue and uh, most of that's probably because the wheels are terrible. Like this thing actually does have a lot of torque, um, but I, I do need to get this up. Uh, 229, let me see if we can even get there. That's actually a pretty solid 228.3 kilometers an hour in a van. That is uh, strikingly fast. I would not have anticipated that. Thankfully, the high gearing has fixed our wheel spin issue. I really do want to go with three speed because I feel like it's very, uh, very that period. It just seems right. I'm going to crank the spacing up quite a bit. I keep making the mistake of having the spacing way too low on my builds. So up we go. 
onto the wheels so we're actually within the graph reasonably which is surprising at 185s which are very very small uh, I think I'm gonna make those at least 205 on both ends here um, because it, it is a truck chassis vehicle so it should have some decent wheels and that kind of messes things up a bit we'll work on that now I don't care about sportiness at all in terms of this build I really care more about drivability than anything uh, so that's kind of what I'm working on let's try medium compound does bring it up just a touch so I'll go for that uh, and then everything else here is probably okay I could probably go a little bit wider maybe just one each yeah I don't want it to be too wide we're not going for fitment here now it's very ironic that this thing is currently shouting about the environment and it also gets 20.8 liters <laughs> per 100 kilometers. Um, that's terrible, that's horrible fuel economy, so <laughs> yeah, uh, don't, don't think about it too much, it's the 80s. On to the brakes, they are woefully inadequate. Uh, yeah, the thing is saying that it has uh, brake issues and brake fade as well as you would likely suspect. Uh, let's just make them as big as they can be and none of that was fixed okay solid discs in the front we go two piston solid discs in the front are definitely going to help huge drum brakes in the back are not doing it though for some reason just not enough okay aerodynamics we uh we pretty much don't need anything i'm gonna increase the brake airflow just a little bit see if that helps with the brake fade <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit it's fine we don't need to be, be worried about sportiness here it's a van like yeah, it's not going to be fast. That's just the reality of it. It also has zero aerodynamics and uh, in, it makes uplift as you would suspect. Now for the interior, I've tried to keep it semi-realistic. We've got a full bench seat, premium interior, nice and nice and nice. Premium 8-track, I have no idea, just give it an 8-track. And then on to this stuff, uh, hydraulic, just because it'll scream at me if I don't put something there. And uh, I have standard 60s safety, which is not great. Our biggest penalty apparently it's, it's not a fun premium car, it's definitely a family unit budget maybe, but body type isn't working for that, seat count, I have no idea. The thing that I match the most with apparently is fun premium, a small premium everyday use car that is practical and safe, apparently coupe. <laughs> Who would buy a van over a coupe? I have no idea. Okay, I just figured standard suspension gas is just a little bit better than the twin tube, and then it, it's got a normal preset uh, just to give it a little bit better drivability. Now, Cyclone, the outsider, was informing me in my last attempt at making a muscle car in that stream that we did a couple days ago that the way I tune suspension is wrong, and um, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's very right about that. So, uh, I'm gonna try to not look so much at this, but look more at this here and see if I can get this to be a little bit better. Okay, I ended up monkeying with it for about five minutes there, and I think I got it to a place that I like, um, and then I reset it back to normal because it uh, it was the same stats. <laughs> so I think I'm good. Um, basically, I just did all that to get nowhere, and uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, I'm gonna have to work on learning how to do suspension tuning properly as of right now. I'm just kind of just trying my my luck to see what happens this thing is rear wheel drive so it's going to be nuts as with all my rear wheel drive cars that's okay though we can't give it any camber because it's got leaf springs and coils <laughs> anyway i think that's it 220 horsepower actually it's pretty light 1500 kilos well less than 1500 kilos just shy of that most of it in the front end yeah let's see how this thing drives and beam maybe take it on a bit of an adventure let's go and save some trees Maybe. Now there's somebody's dog out there is barking like mad, but anyway, uh, this is what the van looks like in BeamNG, and uh, I don't know why, but the black trim on the bottom turned into chrome. I'm okay with it though, it actually doesn't look that bad. Uh, fully chrome van, <laughs> maybe a little bit too much chrome. However, I gotta say those trees turned out real nice and crispy, and if you don't look too hard at the wood, it just, uh, it looks like normal full panel wood, uh, vinyl, I guess we would be realistically speaking. But yeah, we're at the uh, Utah map and this is the campsite. Somehow this turned from a chick magnet to a like cool van to a, uh, well, some kind of environmental van thing. But I, 
I don't know, sometimes my imagination wanders a little bit. It's really been wandering this week, I'll tell you that. Anyway, let's go for a drive. Um, as you would suspect, if you really hammer it, this van uh, does wheelies really easily. <laughs> or burnouts, I mean, not wheelies. Wheelies would be cool, though. Whe wheelies would definitely be cool. Now, in this camping area, there are some tricky spots, uh, but... I mean, we could just back into one of these areas here just with a with a quick old spin because this thing is open diff. And then park up, shut off the car. Probably should have put it in... Oh, wait, where's park? There we go. And there you go. There's this, uh, there's this camping. That, that's, the, that's what this thing is realistically for. However, if you want to get a little bit more adventurous, then uh, because it's a body-on-frame sort of truck van chassis thing, you could absolutely take it off-road. So that's what I think we're we're gonna do today just a very light off-road run in a van that could definitely handle it uh, if you're okay off-roading two-wheel drive trucks which in the desert isn't that bad unless you get caught in some sand uh, but up here in the north where things get muddy <laughs> Not so much. So lately my cars have been getting better, especially the last one I thought was probably the best design I've ever done uh, for a car. Even better than the Magnum Opus where I really forced myself to take time on that one. Uh, however, this one uh, might be a little bit of a... Uh, oh, I just missed a turn. But it might be a little bit of a regression back to a time when things were not quite as complicated in terms of my design. However, I'm really struggling to make old cars these days because my in my mind somehow I've got this idea that good design means extremely complicated design and uh, that's just kind of my design approach to when I actually make vehicles and somehow this turned from light off-roading into extremely heavy very quickly. <laughs> Gotta be a bit, bit more careful here. But when I see something like this, yeah, I've got a lot of detail on there, especially that wood and the trim around the wood took a long time to make, but other than that, it's quite simple, and it's, uh, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Either way, though, um, <laughs> I mean, I guess I can talk about the whole chick magnet thing. That's kind of important. Back in the day, these vans were, were really cool. <laughs> these days, not so much. Um, I think anybody that has one is probably just longing for those classic years. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean, in some circles they're definitely interesting, not a, not exactly among the younger people of the of these days. I think these days it's more Mercedes and BMWs than it is old Chevy vans. But then again, it's all region-based, right? Some people in cities like some cars, some people in countries like other cars. Some people grow up in different areas and di like different kinds of cars because of it. It's all based on your surroundings and where you grew up. And we're going straight for the water now, aren't we? Now, if you want to talk about a car that's a chick magnet, uh, the reality is, if you're going to be ultra-realistic, none of them are. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter what your car is. As long as it works and you can pick her up for a date or or whatever, then then you're good. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Because if somebody's dating you for their for your car or going out with you for your car, there's something wrong there. <laughs> That's just the reality of things. I remember back in the days when uh, I didn't have my own car and I was going on dates, I'd have my <laughs> one of my parents drive us around. Um, or uh, back when I did get my license and I was able to drive by myself, uh, I would drive my dad's very large uh, black Grand Marquis. I remember I went on a date with a girl in that before and uh, I clipped a, <laughs> the curb trying to get out of Tim Hortons. <laughs> That's so embarrassing, but it, it was so it was so funny. I don't know. Thinking back on that, it was hilarious. Now, what I said before about the car not really mattering, I think that that definitely is true, and it really shouldn't matter. But what car you drive actually does say a lot about you. So if you are trying to impress, then maybe don't show up in a rusty E series van or something. <laughs> I mean, as long as your car is reasonable, it shouldn't matter. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, an old Honda Civic, as long as it's in good shape, is going to do you just fine. Okay, we're going for another river crossing here, which is unfortunate. <laughs> uh, you know what? Actually, that wasn't too bad. Doubt you could do this in a normal Voyager. I mean, Grand Caravan. I don't know why I keep saying Voyager. My uh, mind is gone. And I don't even mean Grand. I just mean Caravan. This was before the days of the Grand Caravan well before that. Ooh, looks like I just found a picnic spot. Actually, it's a camping spot. Ha. Huh. That's a pretty good spot to camp, actually. You know what? I really should have put a trailer hitch on this thing. That's just a missed opportunity. I could have been pulling a little trailer. Oh, man. Anyway, there's some real life advice for you. Go out and find somebody who doesn't care what you drive and only cares about the uh, content of your character. That's all that matters these days. 
or at all any days. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. The van's getting to me. I feel like I need to save some trees by burning rubber. Oh, that burnout. No, <laughs> that's a heck of a donut. Anyways, thank you everybody for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. And let me know what you think of this van in the comments as well. I'm going to attempt to take it off this sign. Although, okay, that was a little bit more tricky than I thought it was going to be. Maybe I need to make some more fake environmentalist vans, but with more of a uh, environmentalist bent instead of whatever the heck this other theme has been. Okay, the back end is too long. <laughs> That's hilarious. Come on, van, you got this. But yeah, it's been fun for me to make this car and other cars like it. I'm just realizing now, looking at this other van, that I think I'm missing a few important pieces, including the uh, top light there. <laughs> Somehow I missed that. Okay, this is not going to go well, is it? Switch back, give it the beans, and I think we're, yeah, we're hovering in the air. We're not getting anywhere, are we? Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you again next week. Oh yeah, more automation beam stuff coming up, and more uh, other stuff coming up too. If I can think of games to play, that is. I kind of need to clear off my back catalog a little bit. I'm playing a little bit too much Fable 3 and uh, nothing else. <laughs> anyway guys, see you then. Special thank you to those who have chosen to support this channel, specifically Overlord, QT Bear, Terry Williams, the most random person. Uh, you've changed your name to Jean Van Palms, um, Paradoxical, GA Pope, Davis, the German dude, and Jug, welcome back. Thanks everybody for supporting. Appreciate you guys a lot. See you again next time. Lots of stuff coming up for you guys, hopefully. This year is going to be a, uh, a good one, I hope. <laughs> See you again next time. Why did I say that twice? <laughs>